the secret is to make it win, win, win. Right. If you set yourself up so that what you're producing helps the community, helps the environment, helps you, everybody's better off. Welcome to another episode of Regenerative Journey. This is Dave. In this episode, I talk to a farmer in Southern California practicing holistic planned grazing, raising 100% grass-fed beef. He explains that it's the how and not the cow that determines the impact that a cow has on its environment. So stick around to learn more about that and to have a laugh at me as I get a taste of what it's like to work on the ranch for the day. Let's dig in. So Frank's putting me to work today, it turns out. Some of the fence uh, got knocked down, I guess by the cattle, right? Yeah, so I thought I was just gonna come and, and kind of hang out and capture a story, but he needs a helping hand, so I'm actually pretty excited about this. I like doing this kind of work. Yeah, we got plenty of juice. They tore it down over there. Hang on. You wanna go for a walk? Yeah, sure. You know how to tie a fence back together? No, but you can show me. Okay, well you tie bowling in one end, and you fill the other one back through, and then you pull it up. Okay. You pull it up till the line gets tight two half inches. Okay. In that knot, a half inch in the middle of the bowling, and two half inches on the back side. And so he gave me a quick refresher course. I think I did it right. We'll see. But you can kind of see the fence here. And then my handy knot work right here. Hopefully this does the trick. Beef at five bar beef is 100% natural. And when I mean that, I mean 100%. Some lady asked me the other day, said, don't you use any chemicals? And I told her, yeah, I put oil in my crankcase and diesel in my truck. The cows get minerals, no pesticides, no herbicides, no hormones, no porons, and we don't vaccinate. Okay, I run things as absolutely natural as possible. If you can't calve on your own, if you can't wean on your own, if you can't make your own living, you gotta die out here. And after doing that for 40 years... You got a you, strong herd. Yeah. That's their own functioning unit. They gotta take care of themselves. I provide the feed and water and salt, and they return beef. Uh, I don't dehorn, I don't castrate, I don't wean. All the natural functions of a cow herd has to be in the control of the cow. So, I mean, this is just about as pristine meat as you can buy anywhere in the world. I did a write-up on the number of transactions that it took to grow beef in America, and the average cow changed hands 14 times before you eat it, starting with the guy that calved the cow and ending with you putting a fork into a steak. And every one of those people put something in it. I mean, they punched so much into these calves that your average 12 to 14 month old calf that weighs 1,250 pounds, 45% of their livers are condemned for liver abscesses and abuse of liver. Now, how do you get a 14 month old animal to have liver abscesses if you're not filling him plum full of junk? The difference between conventional beef and grass-fed beef on a simple basis is one is the cow lives outside, eats grass its whole life. Uh, the conventional method is, is the calf's probably born outside on a ranch, raised till a wiener, put in a feedlot, fed for 180 days and killed. It takes 21 days in a feedlot for you to be able to turn the fat white in a cow. Well, everybody says, well, God, we want that white fat. It's so pretty. But the problem is, is looking at white fat, the only thing that tells you is that you ran the cow out of vitamins and minerals. So at that point, the cow's pre-diabetic because he has no vitamin mineral reserves to run the rest of his body on because he's using them to digest sugar. So if you don't want to get sick, eat grass-fed beef. There's 230,000 ungrazed acres in Orange County. There could be cows on every one of those damned hills improving the watershed, growing grass, creating more oxygen, motor photosynthesis, more beef, more everything for the community. Instead, we got a bunch of environmental activists that thinks that, well, God can fix it, except that they don't realize that when they took off the cow and they took off the bear and they took out the cougar, they took out the mechanism that runs it. You can't do the environment in parts. It has to be done in holes. No natural environment is rested. All of them, even the tundra in Alaska, is covered by millions of head of caribou. 
and the wolves that move them. What I'm trying to do is run cows like God ran buffalo. That's holistic plant grazing because we don't have a predator to move them. I'm the predator, I got a substitute, which means I put them in one spot, leave them and take them home, put them in another. So Frank Scott is herding some cattle here. Have fun guys. The cattle are just down at the bottom of the hill and we gotta convince them to walk three eighths of a mile. There they are back there. So now we gotta zig and zag until we get them up there. So far, they seem to know the plan and they know where we're headed. They're way ahead of me. Cattle ranching's easy. So these guys put me on quite the chase. Zigzagging all over the place. There they are. Let's go. We're close to the home stretch. We got a straggler, a bull. I think they figured out that the fence is back up. It's a fence we fixed earlier. All right, they're moving. All right, a little bit out of breath. The plan was to get them through that gate up there. And I think that's where they went. And there they are. We did it. Oh, where are they? I can't find them. Oh. Yeah. Right? Down there. There they are. Success. I'm tired. Basically, this all boils down to you got to get back to the purpose of the environment. The purpose of the environment basically is to recycle carbon. And the faster you recycle carbon, the more robust, the more vigor, the more life you have in any of your ranches, conservation units, whatever your area is, okay? The more you use it, the more you get, but you gotta use it in a natural manner. Okay, plowing it up, planting one kind of crop in it and harvesting the crop on it doesn't work. You've gotta have a situation where you're driving roots further in the ground and stems further up the chute. That's the top of the heap. At the bottom of the heap, you got worms, you got mycorrhizal fungi, you got bugs, you got bacteria that make the soil work. So in other words, if we don't build it below ground, it won't come above. In other words, typically, if, if Southern California, if you ran this thing holistically and got 100% perennial grass stand running on this thing, you would have green grass 10 to 12 months out of the year. There would be no fire season. Well, I mean, this my neighbor here is the California Conservancy, okay? And this is their method of conservation, which is leave it alone. And they've got oxidized, decaying, invasive species growing up all over this thing. And in those spots where it's really brown, there's so many of them growing that the rain didn't even get green grass poking through them this year. If a fire started on that side of the hill, how far would it get onto my ranch? There's nothing to burn. If you leave this thing like these guys do, this thing burns 50,000 acres at a time and kills people. And there's absolutely no sane reason for it. The environmentalists come in and buy this stuff and they throw the cattle rancher off for a very good reason. I, I wouldn't hire a conventional cattleman if I was a conservationist either. But if you got somebody that's doing a good job on your ground and actually promoting and increasing perennial grasses, I wouldn't have thrown him off. I've subsequently started a uh, 5013C called the Herd Foundation. Purpose is public education for holistic plant grazing. There's 230,000 deeded privately owned acres in Orange County that are ungrazed and unused that a guy could run a cow on, improve the environment for the community, raise better quality food for the community, make me a living, and pass on a, a completely better lifestyle to our children if somebody would just change their mind about grazing. One of the main focuses of the Herd Foundation is soliciting local water districts for funds to promote holistic plant grazing to raise the aquifer level in Orange County. By example, on my ranch, we just had a series of storms which dropped a little over eight inches of water over a three-week period. And and most of the water that fell on my ranch stopped there. And the reason it stopped there is because of the, I had millions and millions and millions of individual grass plants, which physically stopped the water, number one. And secondarily, the water runs down the shaft into the root system and has 
greater opportunity to percolate down into the groundwater system. Holistic plant grazing is the most cost-effective and effective way of replenishing our aquifers. The example I tell everybody is take a jar of whole grain kernels, leave you a little space, and pour water into it and see how much water you can pour in it. With all of that open area between the seeds, you can actually put almost half of a quart of water into a full quart of grain seeds. Take the grain seeds out, throw them away, put regular flour in it, leave you space at the top, and pour more water in it. And the water will soak into that flour about that far and then stop. And you can get about a tenth of a cup of water into a jar full of flour. Okay, it's the same thing. You open your ground up below. Root systems have shafts on them. Okay, the water runs, percolates, runs down the side, hits a little gravel area, runs back, goes down to something else, falls deeper in the ground, starts creating an aquifer full of water. My overall opinion is, is that if we don't start taking care of our environment, we as a species aren't gonna make it. And politics included, the only system I see that works to perpetuate the long-term survivability of our species is to holistically plant graze our environment. Holistic plant grazing is a pretty damn simple system for making the world a better place to live. You gotta get up in the morning, you gotta move your cows, you gotta write down on your plan and make better decisions and it'll work out in the end. Nature either looks good or it doesn't, okay? Right after a fire, nobody likes the forest because it's denuded, it's it doesn't appeal to the human senses on any level. Really pretty ground that's holistically managed, that life is growing in abundance, is just absolutely appealing. Everybody wants to be around it. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode, and I hope you learned a lot. I know I did. I had a great day talking to Frank. I had a great time getting a taste of what it was like to work on a ranch. And if you like this episode, please hit the like button down below. If you want to see more like this in the future, subscribe to my channel and let me hear from you in the comments. Thanks.